and second of all if you want to do acting guys it is not that difficult to get into. A lot of people want to gatekeep and make it seem like it's this really difficult career. If you have the right tools and the right guidance, can be, it can be something that is really doable. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I have been a little MIA, but that's because I was filming for a guest starring role on Criminal Minds, which comes out November 24th. Y'all watch it. Speaking of acting, welcome to the new series on my channel. I'm going to make four or five, maybe six videos, depending on how many questions I get about acting, how I got into acting, my experience. Today you clicked on this video. I'm going to tell you guys about how I booked a role on Grey's Anatomy. And I'm not just going to tell the story. I am going to share some tips and tricks with you guys about how I actually booked the role because yes, it's about look. Yes, it's about talent and timing, all those things. But there were a few things that I did in the audition that I 100% no contributed to me booking the part. So if you're somebody who's looking to get into acting, this will be beneficial for you to understand the casting process. If you're an actor, hopefully you'll glean some things you can take into your next audition and help you book the role. Remember to like and subscribe because first of all, it really helps my channel and the algorithm and your girl needs that. And then also we're doing a series, so don't miss any of the videos if you're looking into getting into acting. And please comment down below if you are someone who's wanting to get into acting or you are an actor, you feel stagnant and you just have questions about how to get the ball rolling, please comment down below. I would love to answer them. I have been there. I have been there where I had no career and had no idea how to get into the industry. And I have been at the point where I'm like, I'm auditioning and why do I suck and no one wants to hire me. And now I'm at the point where I have a lot of shows under my belt and have a big one coming out this month. Ah! Anyways. Let's get into the story. Small backstory. From Alabama. Had no experience acting. My husband's calling me. Hold on. I'm filming a YouTube video. How may I help you? Eight years ago. Eight and a half years ago. No experience acting. No idea how to get into the entertainment industry. Just, I would watch TV shows and movies and I'd be like, I really want to do that but I have no idea how. And I'm going to film a video of how I actually got into acting, how you can get into acting. Stay tuned for that coming up. But today I just wanna to tell the story of Grey's Anatomy, how I booked the role, how, how I auditioned. So first of all, before the audition happens, my agent submits my headshot and my resume to the casting director. Here's a picture of my headshot. Here's a little picture of my resume. This goes to the casting director and they look at my reel as well. I'll put that in here. And they say, hey, is this girl, could she possibly book this part? If she could possibly book this part and she looks right for the part and she can act, let's call her in. So as an actor, when you're wanting to audition for shows like Grey's Anatomy, you do need a resume, you do need a reel, and you do need headshots, which are things I'm gonna, I will help you guys with. If you want help, comment down below if you have questions about how to get those things. Um, but I, they sent in my resume, my, all my material, all my acting material, and it came back and I got the audition, yay. So my agent sends me an email. It actually is this email, this is what it looks like. And Joe is like, Hannah, you got an audition. It's at this place, at this time, show up. So first thing I always do is obviously read the script. I read the sides. Sides are just the material that you get, the audition material. Especially for a show like Grey's Anatomy, you're probably not gonna get the whole script, even for the episode. You're just gonna get your audition material, what they want you to memorize. So I read it and I was like, oh, shoot, this girl is crying. And here's one of the things that I think set me apart from everybody else in the audition. So you see at the top, and I think I've highlighted it um, here, I'll try and circle it, but at the top it says that she's already crying. So I'm reading and I'm thinking, what is this girl doing right before you see her on camera, right? What's this girl doing, thinking, right before you see her come onto the screen, right before words come out of my mouth? And I thought about it and I was like, oh, she's been crying for a long time. So I had the bright idea that I got from a casting director workshop like six years ago that I was going to go into the audition crying. So a lot of people will read that she's crying and they'll wait to get into the audition room and then when they start reading their lines, then they'll try and start crying, but me, I took some advice from a casting director and I was like, 
I am going to cry all the way to the audition. So I got in my car and I'm like working up tears. I'm crying while I'm walking onto the sound stage. Um, the audition was at a sound stage, which is like a studio, um, a studio lot. So I go in the studio a lot, I'm crying. And at this point, at this point, I'm kind of second guessing my decision because there are people. Like, I look like a girl walking around crying. Whatever, I had my headshot in my hand. Which, by the way, tip, people in LA don't do headshots anymore unless it's commercial auditions. They literally don't even do. I haven't printed off a headshot since 2019. Anyways, so, you do need them because casting directors see them online, but people really don't use them anymore. It's crazy. So, what happened next? Let me remove my viewfinder because I keep looking at it. So, I'm like crying. I'm like, no, I'm not going to wimp out. I'm going to keep crying. I'm going to do this. So, I get into the casting office, right? This is intimidating because it's always intimidating. I think no matter who you are, or how big you get, or how many roles you've booked, I walk in and there's a sign up sheet, you know, you sign your name, and there's about 20 other girls who look just like me, red hair, white girls, and I'm like, huh, none of these girls are crying. Like none of these girls, maybe I'm doing something wrong, I'm judging myself, whatever. So I sit down in the chair and I'm waiting for them to call me into the room to do the audition. I have my sides with me, which by the way, guys, just to let you know, I've booked a lot of things where I, I'm still holding the sides. Well, you should always hold your sides, but sometimes I'll look down and read it, and that is totally fine. Um, if you're an actor, I used to really, really hold tightly to being off book, and I think it's good sometimes. It can serve certain moments in a scene, but it's okay to read your lines. It's okay to look down. It's okay to not have the scene totally 100% memorized. Um, it's really about the emotion and what you're giving, and if you know what your character is thinking. Anyway, so I'm sitting in the waiting room like this. I remember pulling my legs up on the chair and being like, I'm gonna get this part, I don't care what anyone thinks about me, and I'm like crying. Now, trick, one of the ways I cry is by using a cry stick. So I can cry on cue, but when you're on TV, you're gonna probably have to be crying 15 times in a row. You don't wanna get nervous about your tears drying up, at least I don't. So I use this thing called a cry stick and I just put some in my fingers, put it in the corner of my eye and it produces real authentic tears. Now, a cry stick will help you with tears. A cry stick will not help you with showing emotion and actually conveying to the audience that you feel something. Because I can have all the tears in the world, but if I don't have the emotion behind the tears, it's not gonna work. So anyways, I'm in the, I'm in the waiting room and I'm like crying and I have the tear stick in the corner of my eyes and they call my name and I'm like, okay. So I go in, there's two people sitting at a desk and they say, hey, are you ready? And I said, do you have any questions? And I'm like, no. So I did the scene once. I could tell that they liked it. And they said, can you try it again? And I did it one more time. So tip, if they're asking you to do it one more time, it doesn't mean you did bad. They either want a second take or they're trying to see if you can do the scene consistently. So when you're on set, you're gonna have to, you know, do, do the scene the same way multiple times, like 10 to 20 times, because they're getting different angles and you need to be consistent um, for editing purposes. So you can't have one scene where you're like crying and the next scene you're like really somber, you know, because that wouldn't match up with editing. So they want you to make sure you can do the scene the same way. So I did it and I left. And I could tell that they thought it was good. Sometimes you can tell, sometimes you can't. And I left and that's where the hardest part of being an actor comes into play is just letting it go, letting it go, saying it's fine if I don't get it, whatever, it's up to God, if I'm going to get this role or not, and releasing it, which is really difficult because with these roles, especially roles like Grey's Anatomy, you know, or something big where you really want the part, it can be hard to release that and to not just hold on to it and think about it. But one thing that I've learned as an actor is it's not a good game to play um, where you're like, did I get the role? Do you think I did good? I don't know, I can't tell. Because sometimes you literally never know. I went that night to Joshua Tree with a couple of my friends and I woke up the next morning to an email that said I was pinned. So pinned in the acting world means that they want to hire you, they're sending you the producers, they're saying, hey, we're pinning her, please do not 
let her get hired for anything else during these dates. And when you're pinned, 98, 99% of the time you're gonna book the role. Um, I have been pinned before once and not booked the role, but who really knows why that was. Sometimes it happens. Ian got pinned for General Hospital once and then he didn't get the role, which was really sad. Um, but that is how I booked the role in Grey's Anatomy. No. A lot of work went into acting before I got the role on Grey's Anatomy. Um, and I think one thing I want to tell people, because YouTube's changed my entire life. YouTube is the reason why I'm at, out here acting. YouTube is the reason why I even believed in myself that I could do it. Because I was just this kid living in Birmingham, Alabama no connections to the entertainment industry and I watched this YouTube video and I reached out to the guy who was doing the YouTube video and I asked him for help and he helped me and he answered a lot of my questions and he actually helped connect me to my manager who has since passed away um, but he helped me come out to LA and since then I've gotten different agents and managers but YouTube really helped me and so what I want to tell you guys is that first of all if you have a dream even if it's not acting go for it and second of all if you want to do acting guys it is not that difficult to get into okay a lot of people want to gatekeep and make it seem like it's this really difficult career now first of all it is not easy I have busted my butt but actually getting into it if you have the right tools and the right guidance can be it can be something that is really doable. You know, you can be an actor, you can audition, you can get into these rooms. If I can get into these rooms, then you can too. I was not a child actor. I was 18, 19 when I started even pursuing it. I wasn't I wasn't a teenager when I moved out here. I moved out to LA when I was 20 years old. Um so if it's something that you want to do, you absolutely can do it. So that's what this series is going to be all about. Just encouraging you to pursue your dreams, to pursue acting if you want to, and to answer your questions about how to get into the entertainment industry, how to get into acting, and inspire you to do the things you want to do. That's all I have for you guys today. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and comment down below if you have any questions about acting or moving to LA or just chasing your dreams. A lot of people are scared because they they want stability. I know LA can oh, sorry, can seem like an unstable place. If you have questions about any of that, comment below and I will make a video about it hopefully or just comment and I will comment back and answer your questions. Um I hope you guys have a fabulous day and I will see you next week in the next video. Bye.